Hello and welcome back to RZL Zoning. In a previous video we covered how to determine what zone is causing our problem if we have zones that are not closing or dampers that aren't responding correctly. So now we're going to try to narrow it down. We're going to figure out what exactly on that zone is preventing our dampers from operating correctly. So we had zone one that was leaking. Our zone one airline was red above the panel. So we have our red airline here that we're going to be working with. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the very first damper that's coming off of zone one. We're going to pinch the line before the T. And by pinching that line, we can immediately hear our pump noise change and we can see that our manometer shoots up in pressure. So 63 inches, we know that our line is good up until that point. So next, we're going to pinch the line off after the T. Now by pinching the line off after the T, we don't see a significant significant change in pressure from our damper. So that makes it appear that our very first damper is leaking. Now one thing I like to do when I'm doing the installation is I do like to leave a service loop here. If I leave that, then I can just take my utility knife, I can score the line coming off of my damper. And that makes it really easy to pull the airline off the damper. And then I'm just going to cut that little half inch of tubing off. And because I left myself some service loop, I've got some space there. Now after that, I'm going to need a plug. These little plugs RZL offers, they're an FIT-TP025. These are going to let you isolate your dampers. So by plugging off my airline with the plug, I can then pinch it off after that T. I notice that my pump noise instantly changes. My pressure shoots up 63 inches. So that proves that this damper was leaking because I've isolated it and I'm getting the correct pressure now after my T. So next I'm going to continue. I'm going to release that. My pump noise then gets loud again. My pressure drops. I know I've got another leak in the system. I'm going to move on to the very next damper. Pinch it off after that damper. I'm going to give it a minute. I can hear my pump noise changing. I can see my pressure increasing. I know that this damper is good. So I'm going to continue to move on down the line. I'm starting to hear my pump noise change its pitch. My pressure on the manometer is climbing. So I know that this damper is good as well. So I'll move on to the next one. Pinching it off just after my T fittings. I'm hearing my pump noise change pitch. My manometer pressure is increasing. I know that this damper is good. So then the very last thing that I have in series here is going to be our Easy Hub. Now when I'm checking the Easy Hub, because everything is right there, I can grab my manometer and then I can disconnect airlines and connect my manometer up to the Easy Hub directly. And that'll let me isolate my dampers individually. If I save my red caps, I can plug off my ports. But I disconnected that damper, I'm still not holding pressure. So that means I've got a leak somewhere between my Easy Hub and my very last damper. It's possible maybe a mouse chewed on my Easy Hub, so I'm going to inspect my caps, see if any of those look like they're damaged. That one's got a small tear to it. Looks like something was chewing on it. So I can move my manometer over to that port. Reconnect this damper. And then just take a look and see what happens. I can hear my pump noise changing pitch back at the panel. I can see my pressure climbing. Still climbing. It's over 40 inches now. So I found out that I had a red cap on my Easy Hub that a mouse had chewed through and I had a single bad damper. So that's how we can walk our way through the steps to figure out what was leaking on that zone after we narrowed it down in another video as to what zone was causing our problem. 